Good morning and welcome to today's video. So in today's video we're going to be taking this uh, Nissan Micro centre console um, recovery type thing and we're going to be spraying it a different colour. Now this isn't the one from my actual uh, Micro, this is one I got from a scrapyard. Um, paid about, I don't know, a pound for it or something ridiculously cheap like that. But I want to use one that, uh, you know, if I ruin it, I can easily go back to my original. Uh, the colour I've chosen to spray it, nothing extreme, is this Ford Aqua Jade Metallic Spray Paint. Now, I think this is a more modern Ford colour. Uh, it's not like the good old-fashioned Ford Jade Green Metallic of the 1970s, which was that really nice, bright... Uh, metallic green. This is a more sort of subdued colour, which is very similar uh, in colour to and um, shade to Nissan's Century Green Metallic, which was used on the K11 Micro. So for this, because we're going to be spraying onto plastic, I've got some plastic primer, I've got the metallic paint, and I've got some clear lacquer to go on afterwards. I've also got some sugar soap wipes to give all of this a wipe down beforehand get rid of any ingrained dirt and also to just slightly key up the surface. The surface is already quite, not rough, but it's sort of quite keyed as it is because of the sort of the way that the uh, original spray has gone on to there. So I don't think I'm going to have to do anything um, preparation wise with any wet and dry. Um, that is an option though, you can use, I would personally use a bit of 1200 wet, the grade wet and dry just to go over all of this, just to bring um, some of the sort of undercoat back to the surface and then go over with obviously the plastic primer and another coat of 1200 wet and dry, another coat of plastic primer, let that set and some Ford Aqua Jade afterwards or whatever your chosen colour is. Now on this particular one, this is an earlier console from about a 98 vehicle, this little centrepiece here can actually be removed. So I'm going to take advantage of that because I don't really want to have to spray into hidden areas. And to be honest with you, it doesn't matter if this is still black, whilst the rest of the console is a different colour. So it's held on by three screws on the back. Now there is also... Um, a blanking panel here which I've popped out and also the headlight level control which I've also popped out as well. Um, in fact I think I left the headlight level controller in the car that I took this from because I've already got um, one on mine which is absolutely fine. So the blanking panel would have come from here and the headlight control level switch will come from here. And that's the little tray there, which is now removed and can be cleaned accordingly. And optional if you want to spray it or not. Personally, I'm going to leave it. Um, but obviously, you've got your cigar lighter there or 12 volt outlet. And obviously, the radio goes in here. So, with that out of the way, first thing we're going to do is to give the whole thing good old liberal clean down with some of the sugar soap stuff that I've got here. Now sugar soap is mildly abrasive so it will serve to actually key off the surface as well which is quite useful. So whilst I'm doing that we will come back shortly to the next stage. So with the, uh, the piece that you want to paint cleaned up and lightly keyed down with your sugar soap or uh, your 1200 wet and dry, what I tend to do with um, these aerosols is I put them into warm water and the warm water helps agitate the paint inside of it. So it's ideal to do that especially if, it, if you're trying to sort of paint this in the winter. At the moment, the temperature of the room that I'm painting this in is 21.6 degrees. So there isn't really sort of any need to put any heat into this panel itself. It should have plenty of uh, 
sort of ambient temperature in it already it should be at room temperature if you're painting this say in the winter I would run over a hairdryer briefly over it just to warm it up it just means that the paint um, adheres to it slightly better in fact a lot better actually so we're just going to shake up the plastic primer which is what we're doing now I can really feel it's quite warm inside in the can itself so that water the warm water I've put in there has really gotten through the actual metal itself and, and warmed the actual paint. So, with that agitated, with agitation the longer the better. Generally they recommend about a minute or so. So let's pause this and get shaking. So that should be done. Uh, it's good to alternate the hands that you're doing it with, it's actually quite a good workout. So, let's start with the spraying. For the spraying, we're going to stay about six inches away, and we're going to do a simple stop, start, spray, like this. Gently overlapping what we've previously sprayed with the next line. And then just going back over what we've done. And at this stage, once we've got our first coat down, we leave it to dry. You don't want to rush the process. If you rush the process, you will find that you start to get uh, drips and obviously it's at high points where you've sprayed too much so this should take approximately if we read up on this 15 minutes for the primer to become touch dry so what i'm going to do now is go off for 15 minutes and come back in 15 minutes right and now we're back so i'm going to shake up the can a bit again just to agitate it in between the coats, it might be worth actually re-topping up or replacing the warm water that you've put the can in and putting the can back in there just to keep it uh, keep it fluid and agitated. So what I'm going to do now is to actually go this way across the panel itself. Um, once it's dry, you will note that there are probably some parts on the side which haven't received much of a coat just due to the angle. Hopefully. Doing this should actually coat those sides as well and give you an extra uh, sort of coat overall. So let's get started. Six inches away again. Go back over again like this. Another thing to note when you and we'll actually go on the side like this so we get the sides. Another thing to note if you are doing any work like this, do it in an open and well ventilated environment. And just don't forget. These cans obviously contain a solvent, and it's the solvent that dries off and leaves the paint behind. There we go. And that should be our complete affair, primed up, ready for the top coat. Okay, the next stage is to apply the Ford Aqua Jade metallic spray paint, which should look that sort of colour, uh, or whatever spray paint you have opted to go for. Again, this has been sat in the cup with warm water, quite warm to the touch, giving it a vigorous shake for about one or two minutes, and we're going to do the spray, and we're going to go lengthways 
first off, then we're going to go transversely next, and we'll do that in between coats. So let's get started. Do not worry if you do not get a full coverage immediately. That is what your subsequent coats are for. So don't focus on one particular part trying to get it covered because you'll just concentrate um, all of the paint in one area and you'll get a lot of sort of runs and drips and then you'll have to rub it all down and uh, pretty much start again. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do left to right, right to left, uh, obviously releasing the nozzle in between each stroke. So here we go. And you can come back over again. And the best thing to do now is to let this coat dry. The next coat is going to be our transverse coat, which will be going that way. And we're also going to sort of attack the sides as well. So probably in total, we're going to do three or four coats of the top coat. So let's let this dry and then we'll be on to the next coat. So it's actually quite a subtle finish, this uh, Aqua Jade. And we can see that there are some points that we didn't catch on the first run, such as these inner portions here and these side portions, and also inside the heater control apertures here. And also here, here, and obviously there. And inside there, there, and there. We should be catching that though on the next run. So we're just going to take out the can from where it's been sat in the warm water. Give it another shake and bring a good left to right. So starting at the bottom and here we go. Come back down again. Incidentally, one thing I forgot to mention if you want to do this really well, I would leave it at least 24 hours between the primer stage and the top coat stage. Although, to be honest, with these modern sprays, you don't really have to, but just sort of like a trick that a lot of people still use which is get really excellent results. Obviously do not dwell on one particular spot. In fact what I'm doing here is I'm just getting into some of the areas I couldn't get into earlier. I'm making sure that I as far as possible lay the paint down as evenly as possible because you do not want to have any portions of it that look like you've laid on too much paint in one particular spot and that should do it so the next thing to do is to wait for this to dry and once that's dried we'll move on to applying our clear lacquer top coat or clear coat layer. Incidentally if you want um, again to have a really good uh, sort of quality of result I would wait another 24 hours before applying the top coat. I'm not going to do that because I, I don't have that kind of time but uh, we will come back and apply the top coat once this is touch dry. So with the top coats dry, we're now going to apply our clear coat for finish. Now the shine is actually pretty good as it is and 
you could, if you wanted, I guess, install it in the car now. But the clear coats for me just sort of gives it that sort of extra little bit of a shine, but also provides a seal for the um, uh, the paint that I put on there. Some paints don't need um, a clear coat top, uh, but this particular metallic that I've used uh, does. So yeah, it says for best results, uh, use grey primer and clear lacquer. We've used the grey plastic primer, which is suitable for plastics, and now we're going to be using a lacquer just to finish it off. Now it'll basically seal everything that's um, underneath and it'll just give us a nice durable finish that will look good once it's in the car. Now the colour I've gone for is quite subtle, it's not overly bright and it's a similar shade to what would have originally been in the car anyway, albeit now green. So it'll match the, um, the micro SR dials that I've got, which have a green back in. And it will also match the earlier interior that's been installed into mine at some point, which has um, certain flecks of green on the fabric. So we're going to start with the clear coat, and let's see where we are after this. Again, don't worry if you don't cover it in the first coat. You can go between coats with the clear coat. Uh, a little tip I've learnt as well, if you are working somewhere um, where you don't really want to spill water on that, which is my fault, but uh, we'll just let that dry off naturally. If you're working somewhere, what I was trying to show you was the um, uh, the cup that I've got here. I've actually accidentally sprayed a little bit at the bottom. I've discovered that keeping a handy stock of baby wet wipes actually does a really good job of getting rid of paint overspray so long as it's not too dry. So it's just something worth keeping in mind if you are spraying either sort of near your car or uh, spraying in the house on a table. Obviously make sure that the um, table is, itself is, is covered fully with um, paper but having uh, having the baby wipes on standby is actually a really good a really good plan and there we go so that's dried off don't spill water on it like I did <laughs> that's not the uh, not the done thing but thankfully because it's um, it's been sat here drying for quite a considerable period of time um, it's actually come up quite nicely and the paint is more than dry to the touch so let's get started with the lacquer so again we're going to be going across like this and back again and back over again Make sure we get a good amount of coverage in this direction. Again, six inches away from what the spraying. Even strokes. And the release, the spray release method. So, now we need to wait for that layer to dry and then we will go transversely that way. Right, so that's the first coat dry. And we're now gonna go move on to our second coat. So the lacquer was obviously resting in the, uh, the warm water. So we're gonna start at the bottom. and move our way up to the top. And attack the sides. Those big 
bits that you can't get ordinarily. Same on the other side. Focus on the dial area. And come back down, focus on the rest. And we'll go back over for another transverse coat. Down again. And we'll go back over again for final run this way. Draw more to the sweeping. U shaped motion this time, still roughly six inches away, but this just allows it to fall onto those recessed bits a little bit better. Focus on the dials, focus on the sides. down for another final run and done. Now we just need to leave that to dry. Uh, I would recommend before fitting it to the car you leave it just to dry for approximately 24 hours or so. Uh, that will allow the lacquer to harden and you can then actually sort of get to a point where if you wanted to you could give it a, a little polish. Um, incidentally there are a few minor imperfections on this, there's a bit of hair stuck there which sort of fell on at some point in the process, there's a couple of little scratches down here which were there um, obviously it's from screwdriver damage and there's a couple of little imperfections there and there. Now what you can do once it is fully dry, um, so I'll be honest with you I noted these before applying the top layer but because they're not really visible for me unless I'm close up. I'm quite happy to leave them. But when you've applied the top layer, uh, in other words, your top coat, your colour coat, you can uh, rub these back with a bit of 1200 grade, uh, get back down to primer, and just reapply the top coat again. So you can actually get a completely good finish. These little imperfections, um, to be honest with you, this is going to be hidden by the ashtray slash coin tray, whatever you want to use it for. So it's up to you whether or not you deal with those or not. Maybe some kind of filler primer uh, would help in that particular instance. And there we go. So I'm now going to leave this to dry and we'll have a look at the final result shortly. Now after a little while of waiting, we are left with the final product. Now, it's not perfect by any means, but it's ideal for what I need. And the colour match, uh, if you're worried about the colour match, is actually surprisingly good. So it's got a nice shine to it. Some nice bananas in the background. It's got a nice shine to it. There's relatively very few imperfections on the whole. And that's a nice durable finish which will certainly brighten up the car's interior. One thing I forgot to mention um, is if you are doing anything like this, it is best ooh, to let the camera fall like that. But it is best to actually um, do it on a piece that you've, say, sort of got from a scrapyard or from someone that's breaking a similar vehicle. The reason being is so you can keep your original piece that would have been in the car uh, originally is if you come to sell the car not everybody's probably going to share your um, share your taste and it just gives them the option to go back to a standard appearance uh, standard looking part 
So if I just move this off of here, I can actually have a look at the colour match. And the colour match is not too bad actually. This is obviously the colour without the lacquer. And this is obviously the colour with the lacquer. And yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. Best thing to do now is to put that out of the way somewhere dry and ideally warm and leave it to dry for another 24 hours or so before fitting it to the car. Just gives it a chance to harden and uh, for all of the chemicals to evaporate. And once that's done, the next stage will be fitting it to the car and we shall be covering that in the next video. For now, I would like to thank you all very much for watching and hopefully this video will prove useful to you. If it has, don't forget to hit that like button and also consider subscribing for more upcoming fascinating hobbies. Once again, thank you very much for taking the time to watch.